Good morning, Good morning. and welcome to the Esterville United Methodist Church. I'm Amy Peterson, and I'll be your worship leader today. Our radio broadcast has no sponsor today, but when you're ready to schedule your turn, please contact the church office to get on the schedule. The Hug Puppets orientation meeting is tomorrow night, Monday, October 11th, from 6 to 7 p.m. It's open to kindergarten through adults. It's puppeteers, choreography, God rods, hands and knees, dance, human video, making scenery, holding props, and much more. Call Terry or Edna Lutzo, 712-209-3472 if you'd like more details or have questions. There are other announcements in your bulletin from a lock-in to movie night that you'll want to take note of. And please continue to mail in your financial support to us at 102 South 8th Street. Or if you'd like to tithe online or give a donation online, here's the link to our website on the screen. And now I would like to invite Donna Lordson up as she has an announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Disciple One class will be watching a DVD tomorrow. It's in the footsteps of St. Paul. This is a documentary um, with David Duche, and he retraces the footsteps of Paul, which was 10,000 footsteps, 10,000 miles there. And he does this in the Roman Empire. And along the way, he visits with archaeologists, scholars, clergy, and the locals who shed light on, on Paul. So you are all invited tomorrow at 2 p.m. in um, the Wesley Room. Thank you. Thank you very much, Donna. And now we will have our call to worship. Please rise, if you are able. And this call to worship will require some of your energy. So um, shout to the Lord. Shout out, you are the light of the world. We lift up our voices and sing praises to God. Lift your praise with justice and love. We lift up our lives with compassion and mercy. Let us enter God's house as bearers of light. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Our opening hymn is Now Thank We All Our God. You may also stand if you are able. <laughs>
And now please do be seated. And join me in the opening prayer, please. God of justice and mercy, Christ our light and life, enter our hearts and lives during this time of worship with your radiant presence. Bring light to our journey that we may see your paths of righteousness. Shine on us and through us that we may be lights of compassion and justice for all the world to see. Amen. And now the choir has its anthem, When We Walk With the Lord. Thank you to the choir for that song. Now we will have our call to reconciliation. With every choice we make, we show how faithful we are to God's hopes for us. 
Yet despite the mistakes we make, the missteps we take, God remains forgiving and gracious. With time afterward for our personal prayers, let us come to God speaking honestly about our lives as we pray. Heavenly Father, how often do we make the wrong choice? We sometimes look at others through a different prism, distorting who they really are. We let our mad beat us with bitterness and hurt. We toss about harmful words like snowballs on a winter's day. We would rather insult those around us than to lift them up. Have mercy on us, God, who is everywhere. May we set aside our quarreling natures to be united in common worship, common service, and a common purpose as we follow those, our Lord and Savior, and in whose name we pray. Amen. Now it's time for our silent prayers. slow to anger, merciful, gracious, and abounding in steadfast love. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So sisters and brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ, know that you are forgiven and that you have always been loved by our God. Amen. be seated. Could I have the children please come up? Holy cow, look at all the kids. You know, yeah, hey, it's good to see you. How are you guys doing? Oh, you got your Batman shirt on, don't you? Hey, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm going to be talking about something, and I just kind of want to show you. I don't know how this is going to go because I didn't. Sometimes I wish I could practice children's sermons because it always turns out different than I expect. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Okay, so this bowl represents your life okay everything that's in your life all right so like what do you guys like to do what do you like to do you like to go on walks okay what do you got uh, alex um, playing with zach, playing with zach? okay okay um like that's a video game or something or just just playing okay you like video games? Well, you both, yes. I 
Okay. So what else? What are some other things? How about school? Does anybody go to school? Yeah, I do. Everybody here goes to school. Well, we'll put that in there. What are some other things? Do you ever go on trips? Oh, what do you got? What are things you'd like to do? You like to ride your bike? Me too. You like to ride yours too? Okay. How about you? What do you like? Okay, that's cool. We'll put that in there. What do you like? Okay. How about, um, oh, what do you like? What? Say that louder. Swimming and camping. You like that too? Okay, how about you? What do you got, Nick? Okay, well, we got that too. Okay, so look it, I filled up your, your bowl of your life it's all fun things right there's a lot of fun things you like to do and it kind of fills up your life doesn't it a lot of fun things but you know what this is this is church this is God okay oh guess what I don't I if I pour that in there there's not an it's gonna spill over the top there's not enough room for for church and for God is there we filled our whole life up with fun things to do and if I pour this water in there, it's just going to go over the top, right, and spill, isn't it? Well, not all of it, some of it, but then it'll be kind of messy too, won't it? Because it's all chocolate and it gets all wet. So we're going to be talking about how we fill our lives up with stuff and we don't leave room for God in it. And so what I want to do is I want to take this water, I'll put the candy back in there, and we'll pour water in here so we have plenty of room for God. And then after we fill up the bowl with God, then we can put all the other stuff in first or after the, this, right? Now, now, how am I going to, what am I going to do with this now? I think I'm going to spill it when I, what did it do? You know, I'm kind of thirsty too. I wish I thought of this. Well, anyway, so we're going to be talking about that, how you fill your life up with stuff and you, you kind of leave out the most important thing, and that's God. We kind of, nobody said, hey, I like to come to church and listen to Pastor Kevin. Nobody said that. I do, but I just forgot it. <laughs> well, that should be like, you know, it shouldn't be at the top of your list, but it should be right up there, don't you think? You like eating pizza? Yeah, I do too. I like uh, Casey's pizza. You do too? It spills all over, yeah. Okay, well, let's tell you what. Let's go pray to God now, okay? Uh, dear Lord God, loving Father, Lord, I thank you for these children. I thank you for uh, when we put you first in our lives, and, and, uh, and I know that you bless us for it. Uh, Lord, I just ask that you watch over these children this week. Be with them, guide and protect them throughout the week. Um, keep them safe, Lord, and and uh, we just thank you for uh, them and their families that bring them to church. Uh, bless them all. We pray this all in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Okay, you guys. Yeah, that's another one. There you go. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to be reading from the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter is verses 1 through 9, 1 through 7, I guess. Um, Shout it aloud, do not hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their rebellion, and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out, they seem eager to know my ways, as if, as if they were a nation that does what is right 
and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have they fast? we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day you're fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is this not this, the kind of fasting I have chosen to loosen the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke and set the oppressed free and break every yoke? It is not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So if you were with me last week, you would have um, know we've already begun a new sermon series on spiritual disciplines. You know, um, this week and every week, there's an opportunity for us to recommit ourselves. You know, we come to church, we're looking for a better way to refocus our intentions, to help us through the week. We come to church on Sunday, uh, and it helps us through our daily lives. And I know for pastors, you know, um, we like to be fed too. You know, um, people forget that we're sheep as well. And, and um, we're always looking for tiny morsels that'll help us for truth. And that's why I really enjoy uh, what happens next Sunday. We have Laity Sunday. And I won't be preaching. I'll be sitting there and I'll be getting fed just like you are all getting fed. Uh, and it's so wonderful to do that. And I know with, uh, I just got back from Continuing Ed. And that was a chance for me to hear other pastors preach. And it was so rewarding. I learned a lot, but I also got that, those nuggets of truth that we all look for. And it really helps me um, to uh, live my life. And so these spiritual disciplines, they are part of helping us through our lives. And so from now to November 7th, we are going to be talking about each Sunday about a spiritual discipline and how each of them is, is very important, yet how they have been forgotten in our daily lives. And today, we're going to continue this series, and we're going to be looking at fasting. But before we begin, let us go to God for the prayer of illumination. Dear Lord God, it's so, it's so exciting to have you at the center of our worship each Sunday. But oftentimes on Monday, we go back to our old routines. And therefore, we ask for your presence today in that message. And may the words that are spoken be acceptable in your sight. And may they open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit so, so that we may hear your word for us today. And may maybe we take this message and act upon it as your children in this world that we live. And as always, we pray all this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. So um, Isaiah is the voice of God for the people of Israel, and Isaiah has a job to do. He is called to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the uncomfortable. And in this chapter, we hear from the prophet, and he is afflicting those among God's people who are comfortable. He describes their failure as a nation, how they have embraced a lukewarm, hypocritical, very stale lifestyle. And if, but at the same time, they have kept up on their religious activities. They have gone through the motions of religion but continued to live a life very different. They've gone, they've, this outward expression has shown that it's a poor substitute uh, when compared to an inner commitment. So they pray, but they often offer only empty prayers. And they fast, 
but that's a waste of time too. All of their practices are insincere. So the prophet is called by God to say to them, enough, enough of this, stop. There's a slang word that's been around for a while. It's the, the word is tood, and it's short for attitude. And I picked this up from my youngest daughter when she played softball. Uh, that was uh, thrown around quite a bit is don't give me no tood, you know. Don't give me an attitude. So it's a term that's used, and it's it, when somebody does something that's not acceptable to the whole team or to the group of people. Like I might say, Donna, don't give me no tood. Or I could say something like, uh, watch your tood today, Marilyn. Watch your tood. Okay? Yeah. So for us, as we slowly come back to church or not, Maybe, just maybe, our respect, our attitudes, our toods to God have gotten a little stale. And for us as children of God, we need to remember who we serve with all our heart. So one way to get back on track is through fasting. Now, I'm a Methodist pastor. I've been a Methodist since 1968, and I have been a member of the Methodist Church for that long, and I know this, that potlucks are a means of grace. They are. It certainly is. You see, for those of you who don't know this about our theology, the means of grace are those things that we do through which God can give us grace. I mean, we know the, the baptism, we might know about communion, but uh, potlucks are included in that. God blesses us so as to sustain and empower our Christian life through many things, and one of them is potlucks. So I must confess, sisters and brothers, fasting from food is kind of foreign to me. And it should be to most of you. Amen? Yeah. Now, I've fasted before. In fact, there was a point in my life when I would fast weekly. It occurred at a time in my life when I was truly seeking a closer relationship with God, and for me, it was heartfelt. And for sure, it was beneficial. Now, in Luke, we find this, chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus tells us, if any man or woman will come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Now, I have heard how that when people fast, they see visions or angels, etc. I don't recall ever seeing that when I fasted. I just will, I will say this, on the first day when I'm fasting, I'm kind of hungry. I might have saw visions of Popeye's chicken or maybe Pizza Ranch chicken. I love Pizza Ranch chicken. I never saw an angel on that first day or two. But I can truly say that after those first couple days of fasting, I did feel closer, more aware of the Lord. I know the Lord is with me at all times. He's with all of us. But it felt like he was closer when I fasted. It just became more apparent to me. So fasting is a form of denying ourselves. The love of food is one of the myriad of things that prevents us from receiving the full extent of God's grace. In other words, we are talking about an idol. There are lots of idols that interfere with receiving what God offers us freely. There's many, many idols. So when you fast, we normally think of fasting from food, but in reality, it could be many things that we're fasting from. It doesn't have to be food. You, you know, we have Lent, right? Anything that comes between us and God, like video games or uh, obsession with a sports team, 
a lot of things, M money or sex, television, video games, clothes, cars, and even <coughs> golf could be one of them. <laughs> and during the Lenten season, some of us give up some of these things that could be, so, I mean, it could be, um, we could be less distracted and more focused and centered on what God would have us be centered on, Him. And all that is good and well. But in our scripture today, the people seem to never miss worship. And they practice all the rituals. And they sing all their songs. And they say all their prayers. And even they give all their offerings. And they fast frequently. You see, from the outside, they appear to be very religious. But it ends there. It seems that their, their worship has anesthetized them from doing anything more. And God requires both worship and service to others. Isaiah's people needed to wake up, and we need to wake up. We need to wake up among uh, the people around us, the needs around us. We need to be engaged, and our hearts need to be engaged as well. We hear the scripture today, but we forget to listen to God. You don't get points for fasting, nor by your attendance today. Sorry, Donna, sorry. God tells us today, as he did the people of Israel through Isaiah, that we are not here to give, if we are not here to give ourselves to God, we should have just stayed home. Just stayed in bed. If you're not here to give yourself to God. And fasting is a way to remind us of those who have very little. Those that are on the margins of society the elderly, the homeless, the poor. If you do any Bible study at all, you will find that Jesus didn't come here seeking the religious people. He came here seeking out the last, the least, and the lost. By the way, this is all good news for us, too. And we, too, are to do the same. We are to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Or like we say in my covenant groups with other pastors, we're to give them Jesus. We are, show, to, we are shown mercy and grace, so the least we can do is show the same for others. Show others mercy and grace. And we're not to have a tood when we do it. And it's easy to dismiss those less fortunate than us. I'll admit that just this past week, on Monday, when I did the drive up to Hardy's for breakfast, I kind of always look in the back. Now, if it's somebody that doesn't look like they need a free breakfast, I won't buy the breakfast for them behind me. If it's a big farm truck, it's, you know the guys probably has money. He probably doesn't need it. I always kind of very selective that. I probably shouldn't be that way, but I am. I'm always looking to see, is that car, that person in that car, do they look like they need a free breakfast? And the car that was behind me happened to be a rusty piece of junk. And it, it looked like, I mean, it, it, sounded, it was kind of loud. And it was, a, it was a, a mother and a little child in the front seat. And so I thought, oh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'll buy their meal for them. I thought, you know, probably, what, $5 probably would take care of it. So I said, I'm, buy, I'm gonna pay the, uh, for the car behind me. And they said, okay, it, that'll be $24. I said, what? $24, it's just two people in that car. But I did, I already had said I'd pay for it. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> she must have been buying for her whole family. <laughs> so I drove off and just maybe maybe that brightened her week 
on Monday, maybe that made her whole week for her. Maybe that's what she just needed for that day. Who knows? Maybe God was behind the whole thing. And you know what? I bet he was. I bet he was. So we practice our spiritual disciplines, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what is behind our practice? And fasting is just one of them. So when we practice fasting, if it is for any other purpose than opening ourselves up a little more to God's desire for us, then we ought not to do it. Please don't do it. Sisters, brothers, every time we try to hide behind how much we pray or read our Bible or how often we go to church or involve ourselves in some sort of church activity, we need to remember this. God sees through it all and deals with what really matters, and that is our hearts. So I pray that today, maybe this week, that you will help someone, serve someone, give them Jesus. It's simply out of love, just out of love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's have a quick prayer. God of generosity, we can join in hoarding all the gifts with which will you bless us with, or we can share them with others. May what we offer in these moments be the very blessing, the very hope, the very peace others need. And this is a prayer that we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward?
Now will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, with great kindness you lead your people. You give wisdom to help us recognize Christ as the Lord of glory. Enlighten us by your Spirit to discern how to use the gifts that you have bestowed on us. May all of our church's ministries serve as channels of your powerful grace to people in need of help. We dedicate these tithes and offerings through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. may be seated. Our concerns this week, we want to continue to lift up in prayer these people, Tim Danielson, Sandy Triggs, Ed Peterson, Dorothy Weir, Steve Hansen, Holly's husband, Carol Williams, Albert Swartz, Jamie Manwarren, Trip Postmas, Don Geisinger, Joanne Forsythe, Matthew Manwarren, and Wayne King. Let us go to God in prayer. God of our mercy and grace, you offer us peace in the silence, a moment apart from the demands and struggles of this life. And you sit on the throne in heaven with all the angels around you, and all are sinking and praising your holy name. We, your children, part of your plan and your kingdom, come seeking healing for those who suffer, comfort for those who mourn, direction for the lost, and peace for all your people. We have brought our joys and celebrations to you, thanking you for the many ways in which you have touched our lives with your love. We also brought up our concerns, and we ask for your presence in them and to those that remain in our hearts as well. Heavenly Father, as always, give us peace and strength for your service, for our service to this world. And we ask this in Jesus' name. He taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand for the closing hymn.
Go now with the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, his only Son, and the in fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, remember to go love and serve the Lord.